moving on to our next speaker, who is Rory. Uh, and Rory has uh, already got a microphone. Uh, Rory has, uh, well, I think, one of, one of the favorite images uh, of, of today's uh, talks that, that, that I think, anyway. Um, he's an urban conservationist. He's got some wild ideas about how we can make London more wildlife friendly. And I'll hand it over to you, Rory. Thank you. Okay, hello everyone. Yep, so I'm Rory. Um, I've been working in London in urban conservation in various capacities for the last few years. Um, I'm a zoologist by training, um, and I'm really passionate about um, the urban environment and actually making it greener. And I know a lot of other people here will be feeling the same way. Now, um, today my talk is focusing on thinking about a kind of filter that we can put over our eyes when we look at urban spaces. And this is like a, a nature filter, I call it. And it's something I do when I'm daydreaming and I'm just staring blankly, or that's what it looks like. But actually, I'm imagining an urban space in a different way. Um, so I happened to apply that nature filter when I was uh, daydreaming and staring at the fountains in Trafalgar Square. So the topic of my uh, talk is about what if uh, the fountains in Trafalgar Square were actually thriving wildlife ponds, OK? Um, for a bit of background, if we kind of go back in time 125,000 years, I know it's quite a long way back in time, um, what we would have seen around Trafalgar Square um, would have um, been quite unexpected, maybe, for some of you. We would have had, like, woolly mammoths. We would have had rhinoceros. We would have had um, straight-tusked elephants um, and red deer with, you know, enormous antlers like we see in Richmond Park would have been roaming around in this area. And that's found in the fossil record underneath Trafalgar Square. And that would have been across the, the rest of London. If we, so I think that wildness is quite cool. That there's that history there. If we skip forward um, a few thousand years to 1826, that is when Trafalgar Square was conceived um, as a, a new public space. Some of the um, old housing and the sort of uh, stables were being cleared out um, to make a new public space, okay? And it was a few years after that the fountains put in, um, and we sort of had this uh, beautiful public space develop in, um, over time. Into the 1930s, we had um, a replacement of the fountains. Then in 1999, we had the amazing um, Fourth Plinth become a really important progressive um, place for art to be uh, chain, ro rotating art sculptures to be put in place. So my point in that little history is that Trafalgar Square has gone through, and the rest of London, amazing changes, and it's evolved over time. But crucially, it's sort of it's kept pace with modern society, with the way we want to live, and kept you know historical and cultural importance. So I'm looking at 2019. What is Trafalgar Square's next evolution, and maybe other parts of London? I think it could be inviting nature back in. I think it was 2003, Trafalgar Square wiped away all the pigeons and we were all obsessed with cleanliness. I think now it's time for a little bit of nature to come back. And I mean, how amazing would it look if we had that space that's already there, there's already these ponds in place in Trafalgar Square and they could be really thriving spaces. So if everyone wants to um, imagine the scene, okay, um, you can look at the picture by my friends at Featherwax Studios, which is sort of an artist's interpretation of what I'm envisioning. But equally, you can apply your own filter. Think about the dragonflies we might see whizzing around Trafalgar Square. Think about um, the newts, if you stare into that clear water, that you could see swimming. I think they always look like, um, just like tiny little... Um, um, Godzillas, I know it sounds weird, but in the movie Godzilla, the way Godzilla swims, newts look so similar when they're swimming through the water, and they're amazing to watch. You could have newts actually in a thriving population here, I think, and you could have lily pads and flag irises and loads of native w wildflowers uh, producing incredible displays, seasonal displays throughout the year. So um, I hope that through using this nature filter and looking at our green spaces a bit differently, we can envis envision um, a different urban environment. Um, so I want to sort of leave you with the sort of take-home message, I guess, which is I want everyone to use that filter, to use that nature filter when we're looking at the urban environment, not just in our parks and cities, but other spaces around um, the urban environment. And there's 15 million visitors that come to Trafalgar Square, according to Wikipedia, um, each year. And those 15 mil million visitors, if they see London is inviting nature back in, which it is in amazing ways already, but it could do more. If they see that, I think that will be an inspiration for other cities, especially in such a public space. So I 
I don't know how this will be achieved. I think it would be practically possible. Um, there would be challenges, pollution issues with litter, but I don't think, I think human ingenuity could overcome the challenges of having a thriving wildlife space among, um, you know, a public space. We could do it sensitively with the rest of the culture that is, you know, all the buildings and the art galleries that are there. So, um, that is my sort of final message, and I hope everyone uh, is inspired by the image that my friend did, f did for me um, that really um, helps us imagine uh, these uh, urban spaces in a new way. So thank you very much. That's everything I wanted to say today. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Rory. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I don't know about you, but I am incredibly inspired by that. I mean, that is just... That is just bliss, isn't it? It will probably make you want to venture into London a bit more um, and kind of take all the people traffic in your stride if you can, if you know that's the end goal of sitting by that and having your lunch or something. Um, thank you very much, Rory. That was fantastic. Um,